Now, over the years, Maxwell Hutchinson has travelled the length and breadth of the southeast to bring you his unique view of our architectural heritage. He's been up towers and down sewers, but this week he's reporting from slightly closer to home. Marlebone High Street, behind London's Oxford Street, used to be the heart of a village. More recently, it's come to rival Bond Street. Number 35 Marlebone High Street was leased to the BBC in June 1936 as a home for the Radio Times. The site was previously a pub called the Rose of Normandy, and in the 19th century, it was a music hall. It's now home to the new BBC London 24-hour Tri-Media Centre. That means radio, television and online. And it's also where I work. Morning, Monica. Morning, Monica. How are you? OK. Jane, I remember this building when it was a labyrinth of corridors. What were you seeking to achieve with the makeover? Well, what we wanted to do was to strip out all the dinginess mm -hmm. and go back to the shell. And what we were left with was a few columns, which were a bit of a problem, and a low ceiling. But even so, it was much better than the dingy environment that was here before. Why didn't you move out of central London? We wanted to have a really compact hub at the heart of the city, which we've got now. We're developing lots of other bases outside London, but this, with the server technology, was ideal for where we wanted to be in the heart of things. Server technology, mm, what's yes. that? Sorry about that. That's the real secret of this building, which is that we have enough computer and IT support to be able to swap all our material around the different media from radio, television, online, backwards and forwards, and share our expertise and our information. New York and Washington. Where's the next? The American flag. Where's the television studio? You're in it. And there, and there, and there, and all over the place. The whole building is our set, and as London is our set as well. But when we're doing television, our base is here, and we're going to show you what we've got. The radio studios, which broadcast around the clock, are tucked away here in the corner. They have cutting-edge digital technology, but they still need very thick walls to keep the noise out. UK forward slash London. This is BBC London. It is indeed on 94.9 FM. I'm Robert Elms and I'm joined now, as ever, by our man about a building, Maxwell Hutchinson. What was it like in the old radio station that was in this building before the transformation? It was rather like working in a sixth form common room. I mean, it had a kind of good atmosphere, but it was very scruffy and very run down and very worn out and, and a bit broken, and it did break a lot. This, as you can see, is very high tech. This is one of the riveted steel columns that holds this distinguished old building up, and the radio studios have been ingeniously arranged around it. <laughs> Fair. Last minute rehearsals are underway for Monday's launch of the brand new BBC London News, presented by Emily Maitlis in this unconventional television studio. So it's another chapter in the long history of this venerable BBC building. A new programme, new faces, brand new technology and a new interior. But don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. And neither am I. But this is the last full edition of Newsroom Southeast. Thanks for watching and for your many letters and emails. You've been great. But do not despair. We are back bigger and better on Monday with a new programme. Stay with us for BBC London. You won't be disappointed, I promise. That's it from us. I hand you back now to Fiona for the national and international headlines. Good night.